John, I can't imagine the emotions you are feeling today. Can you try to describe them to us? <laughs> well, uh, um, I mean, doing cartwheels uh, is uh, a good expression of the joy that one feels. Um, that Julian is uh, returned home, well, about to return home. Uh, the circumstances, <clears throat> there may be uh, some questions to be resolved by the lawyers and the diplomats in the future, but having Julian home that to an ordinary life after 15 years of incarceration in one form or another, house arrest, jail, uh, an asylum in an embassy is pretty good news. And you've seen him along the way. We saw footage of him yesterday as well. How is he doing? Uh, <clears throat> as you can <laughs> easily imagine that his spirits uh, have lifted and uh, he will be able to spend uh, quality time with his wife, Stella, and his two children. Um, be able to walk up and down on the beach and feel the sand through his toes in, in winter, that lovely chill, and be able to learn how to be patient and play with your children for a couple of hours. Um, all of the great beauty of ordinary life. John, it's Steve Kinane here in the studio. I know that you visited DC a number of times to lobby on the Hill both the Department of Justice, the, the, the yes, Department of State, yes. and also congressmen and women. I, and, of course, your son Gabriel did the same on a regular basis. I wonder what influence you think that might have had uh, in getting us to today's situation. Well, I think the profound influence is the Australian people who, as you see by the media storm that has engulfed uh, Australia uh, over Julian's return is that th the profound influence is the unity and insistence of the Australian people, the Australian Parliament, the Australian Government Foreign Minister uh, and uh, Anthony Albanese and Kevin Rudd and Stephen Smith. Now these uh, um, these are people are experienced and top of the tree in politics in Australia and they are carried on the shoulders of the support that the Australian people give them and insist that the matter be resolved fairly. Um, then we can go to the relationship between states which is quite opaque and very different. So the institutions of state in their relationship to each other, the FBI, the CIA, the uh, Department of Justice and the Department of State, all, all extremely powerful institutions, have spent many years pursuing Julian to unravel that and to, uh, to take it to a, a position where the matter can be resolved in what the Americans call a plea deal, which is an expression I don't much like because it's talking about people's lives, um, the, that the matter now is on the verge of being resolved. It indicates the profound skill of uh, Kevin Rudd and Stephen Smith in, and, his, and their assistant diplomats and lawyers that managed to uh, weave together our institutions of state and the institutions of state in the United States to resolve an outstanding matter, particularly, particularly where it concerns the First Amendment of the United States, which covers free speech. And that uh, effect of free speech uh, it is also felt in Australia. We like to be able to make our decisions founded upon knowledge, not just rumour and not uh, in the bliss of ignorance, but founded upon knowledge. Well, equally, the American uh, Constitution, in its finest part, has the, uh, the Bill of Rights, and the first of those, the most important thereby, is the free speech legislation. All 
things fall under that. All things are embraced by that. You can't possibly call yourself a civilization if you act outside of the constitution which embraces your nation. It's just not possible. And the other comments that uh, were earlier made, that none of the other publishers, and they're they are the profound, they are the height of legacy media. None of the other publishers have been arraigned, indicted, smeared, cajoled, called liar. None of them. None whatsoever. And that the case Julian has. And they equally published the material that is at the foundation of these uh, espionage charges and accusations. So, John, how do you feel about this compromise that Julian has had to make to plead guilty to an espionage charge in order to get this outcome that you've dreamed of for so long? Well, I divide it into two. One is the human factor, that you only get a bit of time here on the earth to spend with your loved ones. That's all you get. So the construction or if you like the exposition and understanding of that that is encapsulated in the decision to make uh, freedom available to Julian under certain circumstances is vital. You can't live here without time on this earth and spending time with your loved ones is really important. The other section is as I have previously expounded upon state-to-state -state relationships, how states can work together and do work together, particularly when the United States is immensely powerful, a superpower in economy and military. And uh, Australia, uh, relatively, is small and weak, relatively to that gigantic superpower. John, so, John I wanted to jump in and ask skill. you about I wanted to jump in and ask you yeah. about the ongoing legal issues in um, in the UK because you were in the courtroom in, in February in London and you saw when Julian was seeking leave to appeal to the High Court and, and eventually he was granted leave and it looked like for once the US lawyers were on the back foot. That was coming down the line for the US. Do you think the fact that the US lawyers were suddenly on the back foot in his case in London, may have had an influence ultimately on a deal being struck? Uh, yeah, that's a you know, pretty good question. Um, I, I can answer it. Uh, look, the, the last two court cases, the, the judges and the uh, court itself, the demeanour towards Julian and the lawyers changed completely. And I take it that that was under the influence of the relationship between Australia and the United Kingdom and the US. As you say, the uh, prosecuting barrister for the United States, he had nothing. He came to court without anything to argue. He just threw sand up in the air and said, you know, section 363, paragraph 20, blah, blah, all meaningless. And so I take it that his instructions were to, uh, well, he, he was given no uh, comprehensive instructions to put up a serious fight. So also the two judges for the first time delivered themselves for the first time in all of those hearings. I can't, you know, I think, 20-odd hearing. Um, in all of those hearings, for the first time, the judges allocated to the United States a decision whereby there could be argument made in the next in the appeal hearing. This was really important understanding. They gave room in their decision for argument. John, the support of Julian Assange by those close to him and others has been unwavering. How important has that been over such a long ordeal? The, the, you know, it's the essence. 
It, the Australian people, I'm so proud of them. It, it is the first time we can walk out and look in the sun and say to ourselves, we did a sovereign act, us. And this government, uh, sorry, the flow of feeling from us, the people, into the government was manifest that the government solved the problem that we felt existed. I think it's pretty magnificent.